These two young boys used to be bullied at school. The two of them used to be best friends, but none of them dared to stand up to their bullies. They were getting so much beaten that the bullies even tried some ninja kicks on them. So many years later, one of them, Lee Tang is living with his family after deciding to conclude his military career. As he chills with his family, he tells them about his biggest dream. He wants to go to Canada and live there for a while. He will also find a job so he can pay for his expenses. In any case, they are all occupied with their own activities and they pay little attention to Lee Tang's plans. He has also joined the university again, hoping that he will get his degree. He discusses his plans for Canada with his best friend from childhood, Guang Huang, but his mate seems to be agreeing with Lee Tang's parents. Lee Tang is hooked on the idea of going to Canada and watches a few videos of an influencer who presents several sceneries from that country. The young man creates a poster, and he tries to pin it on the wall, but he does not have the right tools to hit the nail and push it into the wall. Later, Li Tang enters a mini-market to start his shift. The night starts a bit weird for him, when two drunk construction workers come for one more drink. One of them enters the store to grab a pack of cigarettes, and then orders Li Tang to bring them a bottle of wine outside. Li Tang walks outside, to inform the men that they have to pay for the stuff they get first inside the store, then take it with them wherever they want to. The other worker seems to be more polite and enters the store with Li Tang. He buys some stuff, pays for it, and then walks outside. Later that night, the boss arrives to start his shift and relieve Li Tang, so the young man is free to go. Before he leaves, Li Tang grabs a hammer and tries to ask his boss if he can borrow it for a day. His boss is occupied with his phone and does not really care, so Li Tang puts the hammer into his bag. As he leaves for the night, he sees one of the construction workers sleeping on the concrete. A few moments later, he sees the other worker as well and tells him that his friend is sleeping on the ground. The worker is not worried and advises Li Tang to forget about it. Li Tang can't understand why this man does not care about his mate's health, so he gives him the finger. However, the worker sees that in a reflection and attacks Li Tang. As the worker slaps him across his face, Li Tang's memory races back to the days when he was being used as a boxing bag by his bullies. He knows that he never dared to react to anything in his life, and that makes him really angry. At that time, the young man grabs the hammer from his bag and hits the worker. The worker's blood paints him as it starts raining, and the water washes the blood off him. The worker experiences shock from the hit and momentarily gets up. However, he soon stumbles on the wall and drops dead on the ground. At that moment, Li Tang believes that he just got caught killing someone as a woman walks by with her dog. But as it appears, the woman is blind and her dog is a guide. The woman walks away and Li Tang is free to go home. Surprised by his own actions, he has a bath with his clothes on. He starts seeing illusions. Specifically, he sees the worker asking him why he killed him. He has a wife and two kids to feed. Li Tang imagines in his mind what might happen next, seeing a scene of himself being arrested and his mother passing out when she sees her boy in handcuffs. Huang visits his friend that night, but that only makes things more complicated in Li Tang's mind. He starts recalling moments where he thinks he has been wrong in his life. One of those moments is when he cheated on his girlfriend and thought he lost the ring he had bought for her. Another such moment was back in school when Huang thought he lost his tablet. Li Tang found the tablet, but he took advantage of the situation and held it for himself. While his mind goes through this storm, he also remembers that he left the hammer at the murder scene. The next day, the murder scene is examined by a skilled officer, Detective Young. Paradoxically, he is not able to find the hammer. Later, he visits the store Li Tang works in and asks to get the CCTV camera footage. While he waits, he is approached by two youngsters who try to act tough. However, they can't mess with this guy, and Young tells his partner to arrest them. As they are being taken away, Young sticks the gum he was chewing on the head of one of the youngsters. After reviewing the security footage, Detective Young goes back to the store to have a talk with the boss, also asking him about Lee Tang's information. Lee Tang walks into the store right at that moment, and Young takes him outside for a talk. While he tries to read the young man's mind, Young's partner, Yang Jae, interrupts them because they have figured out how the murder happened. They found two bricks with blood on them, so they assume that the two workers killed each other at the same time with those bricks. Detective Young is not convinced with that theory and takes some more time speaking with Lee Tang, but since there is not much he can do for now, he returns back to the police station to review the footage from the store again. As he watches it, a fly sits right on top of the camera 
right at the moment when Li Tang grabs the hammer and asks his boss if he can borrow it. Consequently, nobody knows about the hammer. It was neither found, nor it is seen in the footage. The police call the wife of the older worker for a statement, and she explains the backstory. She was married to the older worker, but she also met his friend when her husband brought him home one night. Gradually, the younger worker seduced her, and she cheated on her husband with him. Although she is not aware if her husband had figured it out, this situation might be the cause of their altercation. The next morning, Detective Yun goes back to the store, but this time he only asks Li Tang what's the best chewing gum he can get. Later, Huang visits Li Tang at work and asks him to go grab a beer after his shift. The two of them do so and spend some time together. As they finish their meal, the TV displays some new revelations about the worker Li Tang killed. As it appears, the man was a murderer and had killed a dozen people. That kind of makes Li Tang feel better because he killed a killer. When he goes back home, he has another vision of the worker he killed. But this time Li Tang pushes him back and imagines the hands of the man's victims dragging him down to hell. In the meantime, the mystery of the hammer is solved, as it appears to be in the living room of the blind girl. Did her dog bring it there by accident, or is there something else going on? Elsewhere, Detective Yun tries to buy some flowers and then some juice, but in both cases the product is faulty. Naturally, he gets mad. Soon, he arrives at a hospital to visit his father, who is in intensive care. His mother is taking care of his father, while Yun is on his phone, seeming a bit disconnected from what's going on in front of his eyes. Meanwhile, Li Tang is forced by his mother to accompany her to the church. While the preaching starts, his mother opens her heart to her son. She regrets that she and her husband can't help Li Tang fulfill his dreams. She has even played a lottery ticket hoping to earn some money, but nothing came out of it. In any case, she clarifies that they will not stand as a barrier to Li Tang's dreams. He is free to do as he wishes and he doesn't have to worry about his parents. At the police station, the chief gathers his men around to tell them that if they keep doing a good job, all of them are going to get promoted. He also warns them to be careful about what they share with others, because the press is always digging up stuff to publish. Later, Li Tang goes to work and is approached by the blind girl at the register. The girl, Yeo OK, buys a pack of cigarettes but she does not want to pay for it, because Li Tang owes her 2 million won. The girl reads his name tag. Li Tang freezes when he hears her say his name. As it appears, the girl is not that blind after all. She has hurt her eyes, but she is able to see with one of them even though everyone thinks she is blind. The girl blackmails Li Tang. He only has till tomorrow to find the money and give it to her, or else his secret is going to be exposed. Li Tang starts looking for a new job so he can earn some extra money, but that is not something that's going to work. Therefore, he comes up with a new solution. He asks his boss to pay him the whole monthly salary in advance. The boss is not fond of the idea, because he did that once in the past with another employee, and that employee took the money and left. The boss pretends that Li Tang is not going to convince him, but eventually gives in and pays the young man his monthly salary in advance. Li Tang rushes to the bank to get his money in cash. He is extremely anxious about how this situation is going to play out. In the meantime, his friends get worried about him, but Li Tang does not have the time to speak with them right now. As his shift is about to finish one day later, his boss enters the store, saying that a girl is standing on the streets motionless with her dog. She was creepy. Li Tang knows that his boss is speaking of Yeo OK, so he runs outside to check it out. However, he only finds a pack of cigarettes on the store's table with a message for him. The girl wants him to go to her house to hand her the money. Li Tang finds himself in her house and sitting in her living room. The girl applies some lipsticks, brings some juice for them, and cracks jokes. She is absolutely nuts. The deal should be simple but is not as simple as Li Tang would imagine. After counting the money, Yeo OK tells him to pack it up for her. She grabs the hammer and shows it to Li Tang, informing him that he is going to pay her 2 million won every month if he doesn't want the hammer to end up with the police. Li Tang is angry and grabs the hammer from her hands, saying that it belongs to him. He already did what Yeo OK asked him. However, Yeo OK knows more about Li Tang. As it seems, she has been watching over him and his family, and knows everything about them. She still has a way to harm Li Tang, so she insists on getting her money every month. Li Tang initially believes that he has no choice, but then he starts imagining how his future will look like. It will be like he is this girl's puppy, and she has him on a leash. She will tell him to jump, and he will have to ask her how high. However, he doesn't like that, and decides to take action. 
Li Tang hits her with the hammer and kills her. As he leaves, it is proven that he is inexperienced. He has left the place a total mess, and his fingerprints are everywhere, including the house's door. Three days later, the milkman realizes that Yeo Ok is dead and calls the police. Detective Yun researches the house, but they have to take everything to the lab in order to find out if there are any fingerprints apart from Yeo Ok's. Surprisingly, the dog has dug a hole, and they also find two skeletons. At the police station, the team meets up for a brief, and they are informed that the skeletons belong to Yeo Ok's own parents, who went missing a few years ago. Later, a police officer has a talk with a forensic specialist, who informs him that they found the dog's saliva all around the house. The dog licked everything up, and he was unable to find any fingerprints. It almost seems like there is a divine power protecting Li Tang, a power that wants him to keep doing what he's doing. On the other hand, Li Tang is confused and thinks of ending himself. His best friend visits him at that moment and punches him to bring him back to his senses. Li Tang decides to open up about their past, saying that he stole his tablet. Huang already knew that but he decided to never talk about it because they were dealing with lots of problems at the time. They did not need one more problem added to the equation. In the meantime, the police officers are trying to find out if these murders connect to each other somehow, because they all happened in the same neighborhood. Since they are also stuck with Yeo Ok's dog, one of the officers named Chun Jin decides to walk the dog. As he does so, the two youngsters from earlier see him and recognize his face from the police station. Since they do not like policemen, they decide to attack him. One of them breaks a bottle and uses it to impale him. At the same time, Li Tang walks through the streets. He catches up with the news on his phone, where he reads that Yeo Ok is the main suspect in the killings of her own parents. Soon, he is faced with the two youngsters who want to rob him. Li Tang notices blood on the shirt of one of them. For the first time in his life, he gets a tingling feeling on the side of his neck, indicating that these boys have done harm to somebody, and they must die. The boys attack him, but the next day they are found dead by the police. As for Li Tang, he wakes up very dizzy and finds a note that prompts him to contact a number on Telegram. Li Tang is not fully aware of what happened last night, but he recalls that somebody carried him back home. At the same time, Yeo Ok's backstory is revealed. First, we are shown how she acquired the mark on her face. That happened when she was chilling with her female friends. She wanted to smoke but one of the other girls warned her that there is a gas smell so she should not light her lighter. Yeo Ok neglected her friend's warning and used her lighter, causing a massive explosion. Later in time, Yeo Ok decided to kill her parents by channeling gas into their room while they were asleep. Her mother woke up but her father was already dead. The mother was very confused, asking Yeo Ok what's going on. Yeo Ok was disappointed because her mother ruined her plan, so she grabbed a kitchen knife in order to finish the job. After killing her mother as well, Yeo Ok buried them outside in the garden. Back in the present time, Detective Young and his partner have a talk with a woman who seems to be Yeo Ok's cousin. The woman made a post on social media, saying some bitter words about her cousin. Detective Young wants to know more about their past, so the woman says that Yeo Ok was a crazy person. She had even hurt this woman when they were kids, because she just felt like it. In the meantime, Chung Jin returns to the police station and is called by the chief for a talk. The chief believes that this man is getting older, and maybe he should consider getting retired. He is not suitable for the field anymore. Chung Jin seems to be agreeing to that. As for Detective Young, this man can get no rest. He takes his partner and passes by the funeral of one of the youngsters. Young knows that these two boys who died and attacked Chung Jin were not the best people in the world. He wants to know if the boys had any rivalries with others, but the mother of one of them is annoyed by those questions resulting in her slapping Detective Young. But as their backstory presents, the boys were not that innocent after all. A young girl committed the unthinkable in the past because these boys abused her. Nobody knew the real reason she did that, even though her father suspected what was going on. This means that the feeling Li Tang got when he encountered these young thugs was accurate. Detective Young is not done with his research about Yeo Ok, so he visits Li Tang's store again. The boss sees a picture of the girl, and recalls that she was standing in the streets as a zombie a few days earlier. He also tells Yun that Li Tang took his money, and he has not shown up for work for two days. At the same time, Li Tang messages the number on Telegram, but he is surprised when this contact addresses him with his name. That makes him scared, and he deletes the messages before blocking the contact. While Li Tang is unsure of his next moves, 
Zhang Jie visits the father of the girl who ended herself. The father, Mr. Khan, clearly states that he suspected the youngsters being connected to what happened to his daughter. His daughter became more and more distant, until she decided to do what she did. Since nobody was doing anything about it, Khan claims he did what he needed to do. At the same time, Li Tang is called by the police, but not for the reason he would imagine. His boss has sued him because he took the money he was paid in advance, and never returned to work. After he is done with that phone call, Li Tang grabs some of his stuff and gets ready to leave the house he is renting. Later, Detective Young returns to the police station, and he is informed that Mr. Kang has given himself in. He claims that he was the one who killed the two youngsters for what they did to his daughter. Young wants to speak to the man himself, because something does not feel right to him. Young grabs some papers, and tells the man he needs to sign them if he wants his statement to become final. However, he notices that the man grabs the pen with his left hand. Detective Young stops him and asks him why he's lying. Although Mr. Kong insists he is telling the truth, Detective Young informs him that the murders were committed by a right-handed person. One of the other officers is mad at Young, because he can't see as much as he can see. Then, it's Young's turn to scold Zhang Jie for going to see the father alone. Jie is young and inexperienced, so it would be better if they made their moves together. Mr. Kong is left to go because he is not really guilty, but the mother of one of the youngsters is holding a grudge against him, so he runs him over with her car. At the same time, Li Tang withdraws some cash from an ATM, but the cash is stolen from two bikers. Since his arm is hurting, he is taken to the hospital. There, Mr. Kang accidentally sees Li Tang and has a quick talk with him. Kang's backstory is revealed. As it appears, he has been in touch with the mysterious telegram contact, which guided him to find the youngsters and kill them. However, Li Tang got thrown in the mix and killed them on his behalf. Li Tang wonders if this man was the one who helped him get home, but Mr. Kung prompts him to leave the hospital because Detective Young is here. Li Tang walks outside the hospital, but manages to escape even though Young sees him. The detective wants to go after him, but he is forced to walk back inside the hospital when he is informed that Mr. Kong swallowed a bunch of pills. The man believes that he did what he had to do in order to make his daughter's death right, so he decides to join her in the afterlife. Elsewhere, Li Tang's family is looking for him, and they even enter his apartment. However, Li Tang is nowhere to be found. A new flashback shows us that Mr. Kong was approached by a guy wearing a hero's jacket, who intended to help him avenge his daughter's death. Another man, Prosecutor G, is having a fun time with some people from work. All of them believe he is a good man, and they offer to drive him home because he is drunk. But that's not a problem, because the prosecutor has called a driver. However, the supposed driver is wearing a hero's jacket and drives him to a secluded location. The driver uses a taser on the prosecutor, and the man's body ends up in the river. Meanwhile, Li Tang's family is looking everywhere for him. His sister visits the store he used to work in and asks the boss about her brother. Unfortunately, the only thing the man knows is that Li Tang took his money and disappeared. At the same time, people come and go around the police station. Chung Jin retires for good and gathers his stuff to transfer at home. But he is not the only person to leave, as a team of police analysts also decides to leave. They have been investigating the murders happening around this area, but they were unable to reach any conclusions. The head of the team, Yu Zhang, has a short talk with Detective Young. Young believes that they just occupied space around the office without doing any real work, but Yu Zhang only comes to conclusions when she has credible evidence in her hands. She notes that Detective Young likes to follow his instinct too much, but that is not the case with her, since she prefers subjective proof. However, Young has something he is not sharing with her. The detective pays a visit to a man named Ro Bin, who is a guy fixated on superheroes. His room is full of his collections. Apparently, the guy is good with computers as Detective Young visits him, because he knows he hacked into some governmental files. Detective Young wants to have a talk with him and shows him the files of the murders that happened lately. He wants to know if Robin knows something more about them. Robin can't deny that he hacked into some governmental websites, but he claims he has no involvement with these cases. Young wants him to go down to the station for some questions, or else he will ask to get a warrant and research his hacking activities. After the questioning, Detective Young takes Robin back home, but he is dedicated to keep watching over him. The next day, a delivery guy, who is none other than Li Tang, with a changed look, brings Robin some tofu. The two of them discuss how careful they should be, but they also have a plan. As Li Tang walks outside, an officer asks him some questions. When he is let go, Young realizes this delivery boy is Li Tang, 
and sends Chang Jie after him to get him. Yung enters Ro Bin's house and tries to understand what game he's playing. Ro Bin makes him mad, and Yung starts smashing some things. Shay brings the delivery boy back, but he has made a mistake because Li Tang tricked him. He just brought in a random delivery boy. At the same time, Robin has been recording everything with his hidden cameras, and this video of police brutality goes viral. Jung finds a hidden camera and rips it off, but Robin now records him doing that with another camera. Jung is angry at him, but he is stopped by some policemen who were dispatched to this incident. For months prior to this, Li Tang tries to get away. As he waits at the subway station, he sees on the news that the youngsters he killed were involved in a girl's death. That makes him puff a smile. As he tries to leave his city behind, he is approached by Ro Bin, who starts talking to him about the special talent he has. He is like a superhero gifted with the skill of killing killers. Ro Bin brings Li Tang back to his house and explains what his part is in all of this. He sees himself as a sidekick to real superheroes and has even changed his name legally to Ro Bin. He has been watching Li Tang and it feels like the universe is protecting him so he can keep doing what he does. The bottom line, he wants Li Tang to work with him and get rid of people who deserve to die. The next day, Robin uses a can as an allegory, saying that Li Tang sees wrongdoers as trash that needs to be disposed of. Back in the house, Robin tells Li Tang about a secret compartment built in the house. Li Tang decides to check it out and grabs a taser weapon along with the hero's jacket before he leaves. Then, Li Tang walks through the streets hoping for his feeling to appear again. Soon, he stumbles on Prosecutor Ji and senses that this man has done something wrong. Li Tang follows him to his car. He pretends to be his driver and takes him away. The young man asks him what he has done wrong, but the prosecutor claims that he is clean. He has never done anything wrong. Li Tang knows that something must be going on here, so he calls Ro Bin for help. The latter hacks into the prosecutor's phone and realizes that this man has abused a girl in the past. With that, Li Tang decides to serve him some justice by killing him. In the meantime, Jung's whole police station is being scolded by a high-ranked officer due to the fiasco that Jung was involved in. Detective Jung is put on leave, and he has no other choice but to walk away. As time goes by, Li Tang continues killing murderers that the police have been unable to catch. However, he is unaware that there is somebody looking for him as well. A man named Son Chan visits the place where Li Tang used to work and asks questions about him. As for Li Tang, he starts working a new job in a new area. There is another girl named Jiang working in that same place, even though Li Tang has no idea their fates will cross paths. Jiang is keeping her distance from the rest of the staff, which makes another female employee develop some bitter feelings toward her. Jiang keeps the same stance with the rude customers she is forced to deal with at the supermarket. Li Tang witnesses one such incident, and he can't keep himself from putting out a smoke on the lady's car's windshield. The lady threatens to inform the police about him, but Li Tang has figured out that she tricked the store manager into taking some free products, so it's better for her to keep her mouth shut. Later, Li Tang and Jiang share a smoke. Jiang saw the incident with that woman and notices that Li Tang is rude to the rude customers, just like her. The next day, Jiang is visited by her mother, who starts poking around her apartment. She wants to spend some time with her daughter and support her emotionally, because she has gone through a big trauma. An adult video of her has been uploaded online by one of her former lovers. Elsewhere, former Detective Young is visited by the retired Chung Jin, who has also invited Jiang Jie for a meeting. They believe that the cases they were working on should not be closed just yet, so they need to find a way and solve them, even without being policemen officially. To begin with, they visit Li Tang's family because he was seen in an airport. His family talks about Li Tang's dream of going to Canada and working a part-time job there but they have lost all traces of him. He left without saying goodbye in person. Meanwhile, Jiang is having a meal outside with her mother. She is having a good time, until she notices that a man across the restaurant is staring at her. Jiang decides to confront the man, because she believes he has recognized her from the adult video. However, the man doesn't know anything about that. He introduces himself as Sang Min, and reminds Jiang that they used to go to school together. The two old schoolmates sit for a drink together to catch up. Sangmin talks to her about their past and even says that he has been reading his old diary lately. He has written about Jiang in it. In the meantime, Jung and his trusted pals are still investigating more clues, trying to pinpoint where Li Tang might be located. They are convinced that he is connected to the murders that happen near their area. The next day, Sangmin calls Jiang and asks her to meet because he is being blackmailed by one of his exes. Once they meet, 
He says that he is caught up in a situation similar to Jiang's, so he can use her advice. He pretends that his current girlfriend broke up with him and that he can't go back to Seoul because he is too embarrassed to face his parents. The dude uses some sneaky seduction tactics, and Jiang invites him to sleep on the bed because he is having a hard time sleeping on the floor. Sang Min lies to both his girlfriend and Jiang for a few days, but that can't keep going forever. One night, Jiang suspects his lies and checks his phone. Sang Min has been preparing some wedding cards. The two of them confront each other. Sang Min admits that he has seen her adult video, and he just wanted to sleep with her. That's why he came up with this story in order to approach her. Jiang threatens that she will expose him, and one thing leads to another. Eventually, Sang Min hops onto her and chokes her to her death. Finally, he sets the apartment on fire and causes an explosion in order to make her death look like an accident. Detective Young is informed about this new incident from the news and decides to check it out since he is in the area with his partner. He has been following the clues to find Li Tang, and it seems like a weird coincidence that murders happen wherever the young man goes. At the same time, Li Tang is informed about Jiang's death by his co-workers, but that's not the only news waiting for him. Song Chan wanders around the aisles, looking for the young man. Simultaneously, Young enters the supermarket and sees Li Tang. When Li Tang runs away, Song Chan catches up to him, and the young man gets the tingling sensation on his neck, which means that this man is a killer. Song Chan wants to have a talk with him, but both of them run away as Detective Young enters the warehouse. Young wants to participate in the investigation, but the rest of the officers can't allow him to review the camera footage with them, because he is not an officer anymore. However, one of the other detectives knows him, and allows him to review the footage with them because he was working on some cases involving Li Tang before he was let go. At the same time, Sang Min receives a phone call from his future wife, but she tells him that she cheated on him. What an irony. As he returns to his apartment, Sang Min is met by Song Chan, who presents himself as a police officer. Song Chan questions him about Jiang, but the man claims he is innocent, even though he had an affair with her. Despite his claims, Song Chan is not convinced and ties him up. He also knows that the police are probably coming, so he sets a trap for them. He leaves the apartment as Jang Jae walks to the apartment's door. The officer opens the door, but four graffiti cans explode on his face as Song Chan has set them up to heat on the stove. Elsewhere, Li Tang is about to return to his apartment and meets a young man in the elevator. After Li Tang grabs his backpack and leaves, the young man breaks into his apartment and releases a fire extinguisher. Once more, Li Tang is very lucky since this young man destroyed all the evidence of him. When the young man is asked by the police why he did that, he says he felt like the man he met at the elevator was looking down on him. He did not like that so he decided to get some revenge. The next morning, Zhang Jie wakes up in the hospital and calls Detective Yung to tell him that he saw Song Chan walking by him yesterday, but he was not certain it was him at the moment, so he did not call it in. As Yung hangs up, he is faced with yet another difficult decision. The doctor informs him and his mother that his father is not doing better. They have to decide if they should disconnect him from life support. In the meantime, Song Chan breaks into Ro Bin's apartment. As it appears, the two men have some history together, but they are not on the same page anymore. All Song Chan wants for now is to meet with Li Tang, because he believes they are fulfilling the same destiny. Robin tries to attack him but ends up on the ground. Later, Song Chan is also attacked by Zhang Jie, who goes looking for him alone. However, the young officer is beaten up, and Song Chan throws him out of the second floor. As Zhang Jie ends up in the hospital again, Robin goes to the police station, but is willing to only speak with Detective Young. The detective is notified and has a talk with Robin who gives him a file on Song Chan. He believes that this man is dangerous, and he needs to be stopped. Song Chan proves that to be true, as he corners two young students to kill them after he sees them arguing with a driver. Apparently, this man believes that he is cleaning the world of the trash, but he clearly does not have a moral compass. Even though everything has been going wrong for Detective Young, he is called by the new police chief for a talk. The new chief makes him an offer he can't refuse. Detective Young should work on finding and arresting Song Chan. If he does, he will be reinstated back in the police force, while the chief himself will get a promotion. As it becomes apparent through their conversation, Song Chan used to be a police officer, but he was kicked out and prosecuted after some acts of violence he committed. Elsewhere, Robin has a talk with an executive of a company, 
that belongs to the grandfather of the female student Son Chan killed earlier. The executive has hired some muscle to get revenge on the man. At the same time, Li Tang calls Robin to ask him about Son Chan. Robin reveals their backstory, saying that he approached Son Chan in the past to become partners, just like he approached Li Tang. However, he was wrong to do so, because Son Chan turned out to be a psycho. Li Tang wants to help Robin deal with this lunatic, so he calls Son Chan and invites him for a meeting. The two men meet each other soon, while Robin is tracking Li Tang and driving to the scene with the muscle hired by the company. Song Chan asks Li Tang if he really has something like a sixth sense, before telling him that the two of them are after the same goals. In fact, he believes that they should work together because they would make a good team. As Song Chan lets Li Tang think about it, the young man attacks him. Unfortunately, Song Chan is skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and throws him on the floor. But then, the muscle walks in, and Li Tang finds a chance to run. Outside, he frees Robin from his bounds, and the two of them share a moment to catch up. Back inside the abandoned casino, Song Chan uses rubber bullets to defeat his opponents until only one of them is left alive. He makes the man call the executive and tell him that they took care of the job. When the police storm in later on, they just find the dead bodies left behind by Song Chan. In the meantime, the police officers do not need Yi Ok's dog anymore, so Young and Jay are taking it to a dog clinic. On their way, Detective Young recalls a moment from his past. As a kid, he visited his father at the police station and started poking around his office. His father got very angry at him and warned him not to become a thief. Once he arrives at the clinic, the female clerk asks him if he is certain he does not want to keep the dog. Since this dog was involved in a murder, it's probably going to be hard to find an owner for it. Later, the police are on the hunt for Song Chan, but they have no idea that he is watching over them. Ro Bin and Li Tang know that they are in trouble because Song Chan is looking for them along with the police. They decide to rent a car and buy some burner phones in order to get away. However, Li Tang sees a poster of himself declaring him as a missing person. That moves him, and he needs some more time to check how his mother is doing. At the same time, Song Chan corners the company executive. He wants to get to the president and take care of him for sending his men to kill him. This man is completely pathetic. While the police are trying to track Song Chan, he has the president of the company tied up and makes his secretary tell security that everything is fine. Song Chan blames the old man for being corrupt, and his backstory shows us that he has always been able to bend the rules because he was rich, even when he did some prison time. Song Chan is dedicated to killing this man, but Young and his officers find him. Chan inserts a sharp object in the president's artery and warns them that if he takes it out, this room will be turned into a pool of blood. Chan also plays mind games with Young, recognizing him from his past, and asking him if he is mad because Chan crashed his father's skull. Chan pulls the object out of the president's neck. The president dies soon, but Song Chan is arrested. Detective Yun can barely hold himself back but he restrains from pulling the trigger on Chan. The chief congratulates Yun on his arrest, even though the president died. He also tells Yun not to dig into the president's past because he doesn't want anything to mess up his promotion. Elsewhere, Robin starts sharing his own backstory with Li Tang. When he was a kid, Somebody murdered his parents but nobody did anything about it. As he grew up, he wanted to become a hero and get vengeance, but he realized that he was meant to become something else, a sidekick. That's when he started recruiting others to bring justice to the world. Meanwhile, Chan tricks the police officers into loosening his handcuffs up, and he manages to escape by attacking all of them. The next day, the boys watch the news, where they are presented as accomplices to Song Chan's crimes. Several people react to the news, including Li Tang's mother who passes out when she hears that her son is a criminal. The next morning, the boys are prepared to leave, but Chan calls Ro Bin and tells him that they should meet since they are all wanted by the authorities. Ro Bin believes that he is the one who has to put an end to Song Chan and decides to meet him. But before that, he goes to meet Detective Young, telling him that he knows where Chan will be. However, Song Chan makes another bold move and assassinates Young's father. At the same time, Li Tang considers leaving the city, but he decides to go back as he recalls how much Robin has helped him. While Yun drives, Robin does his best to explain to him that Li Tang is special. He wants Song Chan to be over because he is trying to stop Li Tang, but nobody can really grasp the grand scheme of things here, which according to him is that Li Tang should be free to use his gift. Soon, the two of them meet Song Chan, and Li Tang joins them as well. As they start shooting and fighting, Li Tang stabs Chan while the latter shoots Ro Bin. 
Now that they have Chan pinned down, Jung stands on top of him with a gun. Right there, it is revealed that they know each other from the past. Jung was a kid when Song Chan was a rookie officer. The thing is, Jung has the story all twisted in his mind. Chan reveals that he was not the man Jung's mother was cheating on his father with. That man was the chief. As for Jung's father, he was just a dirty cop. Chan admired him and tried to help him out with everything he needed, but that was until he realized that his father was using an old Chinese woman to smuggle drugs across the border. Chan confronted Jung's father about it, but the man just started beating him up and threatening him to keep his mouth shut. Chan couldn't take it anymore, and he fought back, attacking Jung's father several times. Back in the present, Li Tang gets his tingling sensation again, understanding that Jung is about to kill Chan. He offers to kill Chan because once you kill somebody you can't take it back, but Chan tries to attack them from behind, and Detective Yun shoots him. In the aftermath of this incident, the detective gets Yeo Ok's dog back before it is killed. Then, he attends his father's funeral, and gives his former chief a deadly stare. A few days later, Yun is called by the analyst for a statement, and she asks him if he still believes that Li Tang is involved in several murder cases. Yun recalls everything that has happened, he respects the efforts Robin made to keep Li Tang out of trouble. Robin even made his teeth the same shape as Li Tang's, so if the police find any clues on him, they will connect the clues with Robin instead of Li Tang. Finally, Jung says that Li Tang is not involved. He recalls what their last meeting looked like. After the power plant exploded, Li Tang held Jung's gun on his head and pulled the trigger, but the gun was empty. That must have been a sign that Li Tang should be left to go. Before he leaves the city, Li Tang cleans the snow to open a path for his mother, who understands that this is her son's doing, and he is still alive. Later in time, Li Tang is arrested in another country, but the police chief can't understand why this man came to work as a fisherman here. As Li Tang figures out, there are no warrants against him, and he is free to do whatever he wants. Li Tang's case is closed by all judges, and the young man decides to return to his country. As he walks the streets, he touches a man and feels his tingling sensation. Maybe he is ready to get back to action again.